Every Sunday, we gather together here as a worshiping church community. And as we worship, we sing praises of God. We hear sound biblical teaching. We talk with and we pray for one another. And we remember the death of our Lord Jesus by sharing together the bread and the cup. We do this each week by focusing on different passages that remind us and refresh our memory of what Christ accomplished on the cross. Our passage for this week is 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. So as we prepare uh, to read this passage, if you do not have a Bible, there are a couple of men up front that uh, would be happy to give you one. Just raise your hand as they come down the aisle and uh, you will have one. If you do not own a Bible, you may take this one with you as a gift from Grace Bible Church. So let's pray. Father, we have already sung of the goodness of you. And it is your goodness that draws us here. It brings us here to celebrate, to celebrate your love for us and to celebrate the love that you had in sending your son to suffer and die in our place. May we remember it well this morning in these passages. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. So let's read together 1 John chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. So first, I want to share a couple of things uh, about the book of 1 John that may hopefully enhance our understanding uh, of this passage. The theme of this book is clearly stated in chapter 5, it's verse 13, and it says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Please note the statement of, insur of assurance, that you may know God proclaims Jesus as the Christ, the incarnate Son of God, to assure them in their faith and encourage them to persevere. John's purpose in writing is assurance. John gives us that assurance in two primary ways. One was to expose and to work against the agendas of false teachers. These false teachers did not confess Jesus of Nazareth as the Christ, and they denied that Jesus had come in the flesh. They also minimized the seriousness of sin, and I might add, maybe even the presence of sin in a person's life. They claimed that it was possible to have fellowship with God regardless of how a person lived. And not only that, but these heretics failed because their spiritual pride resulted in a lack of brotherly love. The second way that John gives us assurance is what he states at the beginning of the book in verse 1. What was from the beginning? Believers know what was seen and what was written, written about the reality of Jesus Christ's life and his work. The events of his life were observed by eyewitnesses and passed on to us. Further assurance is given by John as he points out that Christians know that their lives have been transformed through faith in Christ. We know that. John summarizes the transformation as having a right theology, righteous living, and a love for the brethren. He wants believers to observe the manifestations of their faith, which is evident in their lives. In the book of 1 John, uh, John highlights two characteristics of God. First, God is light. 
1 John 1, 5. Second, God is love. 1 John 4, verse 8. Both qualities are essential attributes of God. To walk in the light is to walk in the life of God. To practice love is to demonstrate the character of God. In 1 John 4, 8, our passage for today, it says, God is love. And in the prior verse, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. The command in verse 7 is for believers to love one another. The source of this love is God and his love for believers. John says that love is from God. And if we have been born of God, <clears throat> which means that his life is now in us, then we will demonstrate that love. John is saying that to know the love of God is to manifest his love. We are to be characterized by love. And so the reason we have this love is because it is the nature of God whose life is in us. He's referring to a particular kind of love that is found only in those lives that have been regenerated by Christ. Another reason we have life or we have love because this love was manifested by Christ. Verses 9 and 10 says, By this the love of God was manifested in us that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might love through him. And in this love not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Verse 9 states the incredible manner in which God's love was displayed. God sent his son on a mission with a purpose in mind. This purpose is that we might live through him. According to one author, the verb live, which is in the Greek, uh, zesosomen, implies that those whom the Son was sent, to, the, to whom the Son was sent, were in a condition of spiritual death, and his mission was to impart life to them. This life only occurs through Christ, since he is the only true and mediating agent between God and man. There have been many mass manifestations of, love, of the love of God, but none surpasses the gift of his Son. He sent him into the world as an atonement for our sins so that we could have eternal life with him in heaven. God sent his Son to be a sacrifice for sins of all whom he has chosen, of all who would believe in him and put their faith and trust in him. He sent Jesus as a satisfying propitiation for his wrath. God's free gift in sacrificing his son is the model of love for us. God gave his son for our sins. Another author describes love this way. Love is always demonstrated by actions. It's not abstract. It's never complacent. And it's never static. End of quote. God sent his son into the world to save sinners. Jesus physically had to suffer, die, and be raised on the third day. These are all actions, love actions. Our act was to sin, which we are all guilty of. God's action was to love and to send. So if you're here today and your life has not been regenerated by believing in the death and resurrection of Jesus, we want you to know that we're grateful that you are here. But please be aware of celebrating that the Lord's table is not for you. It's only for those with a genuine saving faith 
whose lives have been changed by our Savior. By your own, if by your own admission you have not been if you've not experienced a new birth, please allow the elements to pass by as they're presented to you. Also, I would like to invite you to speak with any one of the uh, the elders, or there'll be someone up here to my right, to your left, at the end of the service, and any one of us would be happy to share with you what it means to have a saving, loving relationship with Christ. So men, please come in service. Believers, as the elements are presented, please be reminded of the love that God has demonstrated to you. You were chosen before the foundation of the world by God to receive the gift of salvation. God sent his son to suffer and die in your place so that your sins are forgiven and you can have peace with God. You are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand so that you could walk in them. Nothing is able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we are loved by God with a perfect love. We are loved into perfection in the day we arrive in heaven. Please take the bread and juice as you're prepared. And I will be back in a few minutes to close our time in prayer. <clears throat>